doing some cooking, you know, due to the times. Uh, I'm trying to uh, do some social distancing, working from home uh, a little bit more than I normally would be. You know, chefs never get to work at home, but here I am. I'm, I'm at home. You're in my kitchen. You're here with me. So welcome to my house. I'm so happy you're here with us. So I'm going to be here all week with dinner ideas. Um, I've got some great stuff planned for you guys. Uh, today, I'm going to whip together uh, a pasta, one of my favorite pastas, one of my signature pasta dishes with ingredients that I just had kicking around. I also wanted to start doing some um, well, deep prep. That means that I'm going to start something today and I'm going to finish it tomorrow. So I've got, uh, I'm going to show you guys how to make some bread. Um, and of course, if you know uh, my cooking, if you followed me for a while, you know that I hate measuring and I'm not very fond of baking. So I'm going to show you how to make bread, no measure, piece of cake. All right, so we're going to start that today. We're going to finish it tomorrow. I got some great stuff coming up. I went to the grocery store and, you know, if you're facing emptier shelves, uh, certainly in my neighborhood, uh, not a tremendous amount of selection. Um, I'm kind of going to grab what I can find and I'm going to show you what I'm making for dinner. So tomorrow I've got some, uh, uh, some Cajun inspired uh, dinner for you. Uh, later in the week, I'm going to do some stir fry uh, with some of the frozen uh, products that I found. Uh, I also want to do breakfast for dinner one day. So I got all kinds of ideas. Most importantly, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in the box. Pete's on the camera. Say hi, Pete. Hi. And Pete will just, uh, he'll wave me down. He'll let me know that you have a question. I'm happy to answer those live right here for you. Make sure that you check out uh, Appliance Factory Mattress Kingdom's YouTube channel. Do you know that I'm on there as one of their, uh, one of their uh, spokespersons, uh, Celebrity Chef Mark. And I do all kinds of great videos. I'm answering your questions there. I'm also on my own YouTube channel, at Chef Mark Hicks. So make sure you check me out over there as well. Uh, I'd like to thank my friends at Wet Appliance Factory and Mattress Kingdom. Um, so they are an essential business because everybody needs a refrigerator. Uh, we're selling, apparently they're selling lots of freezers, uh, dishwashers, uh, lots of sanitation cycles on washers and dryers. So they're open for business. And what they've done to uh, accommodate uh, the virus and everything that's going on, public health regulations, is that you can shop online, you can shop via phone. Um, our salespeople are there, they're helping. You can uh, get delivery, our delivery drivers. Uh, they're being screened daily um, and we're taking every precaution we can to make sure that being a central business that we're being as safe as possible. So uh, they're open for business. Uh, it's a low foot traffic, relatively low volume specialty retailer. There's locations everywhere. Um, so I'd like to thank Appliance Factory for sponsoring uh, these cooking segments. Appreciate that. All right, so let's get cooking. What am I making today? Well, I promised you bread, no measure bread. You know I hate measuring. I'm gonna wash my hands for 20 seconds. All right, got my soap here. So one of the things, and you're washing hands for 20 seconds as a chef, this is something I've been doing for a long time. And I like to kind of make sure that I get up my arms a little bit as well. Back of my hands, my arms. I shouldn't have my watch on if I was in a restaurant. I never wore a watch ever when I worked in a restaurant because uh, it's not as clean. It makes it harder to wash your hands. But since I'm just cooking for myself and I'm cooking for you, I wish we had smell o vision I wish I could email you some of this delicious food. But I'm going to just go ahead and keep my watch on there. Water, good hot water. And... Of course, you know, we talk here all about washing hands, but also it's equally important to dry your hands. So I don't know, hopefully this has been, it feels like 20 seconds. It's longer than you think. You know, remember when your kids and say wash your hands, say the alphabet twice? Okay. And I like to wipe towel for this. And make sure that you dry your hands really thoroughly. That's important. That's, I think, as important as washing hands. Making your hands are good and dry. All right, I'm ready to cook here. Um, my trash can's way over here. I'll be right back, guys. Here's a little, here's a little pro tip. I like a trash can that's loose. And I put it right next to me, right there, when I'm cooking. It's a pedal can. I'm not a like the the trash cans that are built into the countertops, uh, into the cabinets are nice. Um, but I still like to have a loose can. And I carry it around with me if I'm cooking here and I have a lot of trash. I can just like scoop stuff right off my cutting board, right in the trash can. I have a pedal can, that's why I, that way I'm not like touching everything with my hands. All right, um, I've done a few things before you guys got here. Um, I pulled out my 
mise en place, which means to put in place for the pasta. So I have spaghetti, parsley, garlic, have some bacon, of shallot. I keep shallots. I like them. I, they have a great long shelf life. Um, I look for shallots that are single lobe, which is to say that when you feel the shallot, it's all one piece. It's not two pieces surrounded by skin. On the floor. And then, oh, oh gosh. Wow, Pete. Pete is not known for his uh, swift hands. Or maybe he is. Maybe he meant to, meant to beat me in the forehead. Um, gets more views. What's that? Gets more views. Gets more views, right? And I have some Parmesan cheese here. Hopefully I don't have a welt. All right, so this is my mise en place. What I did was I made sure my cutting board was clean. I sharpened my knife. I pulled all the cookware I need. I get everything ready to start cooking before I started cooking. That makes this a lot easier. If I were, this is a recipe I've made many, many times, this particular recipe, pasta carbonara. So I don't necessarily need to mise en place that closely because I'm very, very familiar with it. However, if it's a new recipe you've never made before, to really help move things along, I recommend getting everything ready. I'm gonna chop some stuff here in a second and kind of get everything ready. I definitely wanna get my pasta working because that's gonna be the thing that's gonna take the longest. Now, I learned this recipe when I worked in New York City, over to Manhattan, at this little restaurant called Filonico, which was inspired by a small town in Tuscany, Monte Filonico. And the chef, he, he taught me how to cook pasta. And you think, well, of course, you know how to cook pasta. Well, there's some tricks to it. And one of the tricks is if you're making pasta for one person, you do about, oh, about a nickel. And that's enough pasta. That's an entree portion of, for one pasta. And we used to make appetizer, it would be about half of that. So this would be enough for two, pasta, two appetizers. I'm going to make a little bit extra because I think Pete and I will probably end up eating this. Uh, Pete behind the camera, this I know happen to know this is one of his favorite things I make. So uh, don't crack your pasta in half. We're going to go into boiling water. I salted the water. I don't oil my water. The oil just floats to the top. It doesn't necessarily help keep your pasta from sticking together. Um, if your pasta is at a good hard rolling boil and you're using enough water, um, you, it won't stick together. A lot of times sticking and binding together is because your pasta is a too small quantity of water. So I got some boiling water over here. I'm gonna make sure that this is a good hard rolling boil, and it is, and in I go, okay? So I'm gonna keep an eye on that here. Make sure I stir that. Um, so I mentioned that I don't like to um, add oil to the water. Um, you know, if that's your thing, great. I'm not telling you not to, but just keep in mind, it floats to the top and it rinses off as you're stirring. Um, one of the things I did hear about pasta, water, oil and pasta rather, is that it helps maintain a boil. And there might be some truth to that, but honestly, I just find that good old salted water, hot water is gonna do the trick. Okay, so one of the things with pasta carbonara, the trickiest part of this recipe is timing it because we want the sauce and the noodles to be done at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the pasta. And I'm not gonna rinse the pasta. When the pasta's done, I'm going to pour it into a colander and I'm gonna let it sit and just kind of just let it let it sit, let it rest a little bit. It might start to stick together, but by the time, but when you throw it with any of the sauce, it breaks apart pretty much instantly. Uh, in fact, when I worked in restaurants, we would pre-cook pasta, like a really busy restaurant, we'd pre-cook maybe 10 pounds of pasta, we'd portion it out, you know, six or eight ounces of pasta, put it in a portion bag. I would never oil the pasta because I noticed the pasta would go bad in two or three days. The oil is such a thin veneer that it would spoil. If you're pre-cooking your pasta, try not oiling it. It's okay, it'll stick together like crazy, but again, once it hits that hot sauce, it'll just come, up, come apart and you'll actually be able to get five days out of it as opposed to just one day. I have some more tips about how long you can keep fresh food. Uh, I'll come back to that. Okay, bread, I promise you guys bread. All right, so I'm not gonna measure here. I have flour, and this is all purpose flour, AP flour. Anything you can find, I'm gonna do uh, two scoops. That looks good, okay. Two scoops of flour, then I'm gonna do instant yeast. I keep my instant yeast in the freezer, it lasts forever. If you buy um, standard yeast, you have to bloom it, which means you have to put it in some warm water and you have to let it sit for 10 minutes and it'll kind of start to bubble and activate. The beautiful thing about instant yeast is that you can just add it straight to the recipe and you can add cold water and it'll start to bloom. So how much? Well, you know, I find that the more yeast you add, 
you know, the poofy your, your bread will be. Uh, and yeast, you don't have to have altitude adjust when you're baking with yeast. Because yeast is biological, it knows that it's in Denver, it knows what its altitude is automatically. I'm gonna turn my pasta down, hold on. And you don't have to make any uh, additional uh, changes for the temperature or for altitude, which is pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna do, oh, feels like a tablespoon and a half. Okay, salt, gotta have some salt in there. I like to add a little bit of fat, but traditionally bread, is just flour, yeast, salt, water. If you're adding any fat to it, you're fortifying your bread. So I'm fortifying it with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and a good amount of salt. Salt's really where the flavor is. Keep in mind, the more salt you add, the less it's gonna rise, so the less it's gonna puff up. The salt kind of inhibits the yeast. There's a balance there, but don't worry about adding too much salt. Um, in fact, you typically can add more than you think you need. And then some water, and I'm gonna go with relatively cold water okay i'm just gonna eye that out that feels like the right amount and here's a nice little trick i always keep a box of rubber gloves in my pantry i'm gonna grab one of those because this can be kind of a messy job i like to use my hand for this so here's the rubber glove i always just keep these kicking around i get these at the restaurant supply store for messy jobs it makes cleanup really easy all right i'm just going to give this a stir a little bit of stir. I start with a small amount of water, and if I need more, it's easier to add more water than it is to add more flour. If it looks like it's a little bit on the dry side, be careful about adding too much additional water. The more you need, the, um, the more moisture will get distributed. I am gonna add just a touch more water. I think that's pretty good. And what I'm looking for here is a nice kind of combined dough. Touch more water. That's good. And you can see here, once again, no measuring, just kind of feeling it out. Okay, we're getting there. That's feeling pretty good. I like to knead my dough, my dough as little as possible. The reason being is the more you knead it, the more you uh, toughen up the gluten strands. You get uh, uh, glutinous development, your bread, like if you like really chewy bread, you can go ahead and knead it all day long. Okay, I'm gonna throw this on the deck here and knead it a little bit so you guys can see what I'm up to. It might be a little easier for you to observe. Okay, touch more flour. It's the fun thing about cooking at home. I just have all my resources, all my ingredients just out where I need them. Okay, and when I knead, I, I fold, push, turn, fold, push, turn, fold, push, turn, fold, push, turn. I'm just trying to even out that moisture. I can feel it's like a little bit, there's just a little bit of like chunks in there that aren't really well distributed. Okay, that's looking good. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this ball of dough and I'm gonna seam roll it. So I'm just gonna push it around the cutting board, letting it, letting it kind of catch traction. That's gonna push all the seams to the back side. And there we go. So that's my dough, just that easy to pull together. I'm gonna let this rest overnight. Now I could let this sit out. Uh, what time is it now? It's four o'clock. If I was eating dinner at 6.30, it would be ready. I could let it sit out for a couple hours. Um, I would cover it with some oil, a little plastic wrap. It's going to ferment. It's going to have its primary fermentation. It's going to puff up. I could punch it down. I could let it have its secondary fermentation pop up again. And then I could shape it and go into the oven for bread. I like a nice hot oven. I'm thinking I start at 425. And uh, you're going to bake your bread until it's 190 degrees internal temperature. So you just use a thermometer and stick it in there and 190 degrees. And you know what, that works for cakes too. Anything that you're baking, 190 degrees internal temperature, pretty much anything you're cooking is pastry wise, uh, baking wise, is gonna be like perfect. So it's kind of a neat, neat little trick. I used to teach uh, at the Scoffee A School up in Boulder, let's say, say hi to my friends up there. And uh, I taught, ironically, I taught baking and pastry up there um, to the students who specialize in savory food. So uh, I was able to, it's not that I can't bake, it's just not my favorite thing, because again, I'm not a big fan of measuring. Um, so I kind of taught my students how to just make some recipes that they can memorize, and ratio, ratio, lots of ratios. Okay, so I got a bag here. I just hit it with a little bit of oil, just to keep it sticking. I'm gonna throw this bad boy in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this sit in the refrigerator overnight. 
very slowly, that instant yeast is very slowly just gonna activate. Tomorrow, I'm just gonna shape it and it's gonna go in the oven and we're gonna bake it, okay? So that's my, my bread for my dough. I don't know, I might make baguettes. I might make a bully loaf, uh, something rustic. I don't know, we'll see how it feels. See what, see what tomorrow brings, okay? Or maybe you have a suggestion, you can let me know what you like. All right, see how I got my cutting board right next to my sink? This is my signature move right here, just for cleaning up. I just use, boom, right into my sink or right into my trash can. Really easy to kind of maintain a clean kitchen. Clean as you go, that's much easier. It might take a little more time uh, initially, but honestly, if you practice cleaning as you go, you'd be surprised at how when you're done cooking, there's no dishes. Like if I was waiting for my pasta to cook and I didn't need to cut stuff, I could wash this bowl right now. So just really kind of staying on top of um, keeping your kitchen as clean as possible. Okay, uh, my bacon, um, I bought thick cut bacon. It's the same bacon I would use for breakfast bacon. Um, I just chop it up. I love bacon and eggs. I have bacon and eggs every morning. So I always have bacon kicking around. Garlic, you know, garlic's got a great shelf life. It's something I always keep around. Um, parts, I don't always have parsley, but if I have it, it's nice to have this recipe. Parmesan, which I'm going to grate here. And then, of course, a shallot or onion, either one. Let me show you how to dice this. Uh, we've got two sides here, uh, the root end, right? And this is going to be extra delicious since it bounced off my forehead. Uh, if, you had, if you didn't catch that, make sure you tune back to the beginning. It's pretty funny. We've got the root end, which is the fuzzy end, and then the non-root end, which is the pointy end. I'm going to cut off the non-root end, I'm going to cut the shallot in half, intersecting the root end, and I'm going to peel, and when I peel, I just take one layer off additional, because it's kind of leathery and not as nice. I'm just going to do one of these half of one shallot here. Okay, i got my trash can right here, in I go. Okay, slices down. Ooh, I just sharpened my knife, it's so nice. Okay, but not all the way through. I'm going to make a cross cut or two, right, so it's nice and small. Forward rocking motion, I'm just gonna take this down to a nice small dice, as small as you can get it. You can see I'm rocking my knife forward. You know, I try to avoid going back through and randomly mincing because that's when it, it just, it's not as nice of a cut. Um, that's when it tends to spray into your face and make you cry. You know, people ask me, oh, what can I do to keep me from crying? Honestly, use a very sharp knife and have, and have good technique you would be surprised at how much less onions are likely to make you cry. Some are just stronger than others. You know, I hear wives' tales, light a candle, uh, put a piece of bread in your mouth. You know, whatever works for you is going to be great. That's what I do. I just use a sharp knife and, and good technique. Garlic. Uh, I peeled the garlic already. Here's the root end. I'm going to hold that to the left. I'm going to slice from right to left. I'm going to slice this into nice little rustic pieces here. And then I'm just going to come through. And I'm gonna slice that into like little little mash sticks, little kind of garlic julienne. I like having my garlic bigger. I don't like to mince it too much if I'm doing it by hand. You know, if you got that stuff in the in a in a jar, just throw it away and buy fresh. You know, if you're not gonna work with fresh garlic, do you really deserve it? Uh, no, no, you don't. That's my own question. Some parsley. I just pull some of the rough stems off. I prefer curly parsley because I think it's a lot easier to cut than flat leaf. And again, I'm just going to go through just a nice thin cut. And this is a random cut. This is that mince that we avoid with onion, but you can see just how easy it is to chop some parsley. If you keep it nice and dry, you can chop parsley and keep it for a couple days. In a restaurant, we'll chop a ton of parsley. We'll wash it, we'll chop a ton of it, and they'll wring it out in like a kitchen towel, a clean kitchen towel. And it's nice and dry. It's easy to sprinkle. So um, that's if you're doing a lot. I'm just doing really small, small amount here, right? I'll do the pasta, I'll do the noodles, uh, pardon me, the, the cheese here at the last moment. All right, let me check my noodles. I think timing here is gonna be just right. Let me bring this over, take a look. Okay. How do you know when your pasta is done? You just gotta feel it or taste it. So about four minutes left on this, so this is gonna time out perfectly. In fact, I'm gonna crank this up a little bit. Get that on that bigger burner, kind of get a little bit more heat in there. Okay, so there we go. Now we got our mise en place, beautiful. Got my garlic, got my bacon, got my shallots, parsley, cheese, with not a lot of ingredients and pasta carbonara. 
egg. Egg. I need my egg. All right. And actually, just the egg yolk. All right. I want to talk real briefly about how long can you keep food. So, I've got a rooster chicken here. Uh, what day is it? It is Monday. I bought this Saturday in the morning. Five days on food like this that's cooked. Five days. So, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So I've only got today and two more days left. Five days doesn't seem like a lot for something like this. You buy a big roaster chicken. So have a plan. Okay, I'm gonna have the breasts for dinner. I'm gonna put the thighs in soup and then I'm gonna freeze that soup. Um, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna have the thighs for dinner. I'm gonna put the breasts in chicken salad. I'm gonna feed my family with lunch for that tomorrow. I'm gonna take the carcass, I'm gonna make chicken stock and then I'm gonna throw in some noodles and some other stuff. You can get three meals out of a roaster chicken. And if you're not ready to eat chicken three days in a row or what have you, be prepared to freeze it. If you need freezer space, uh, right now is a great time to buy them. Appliance Factory has got a ton of freezers in stock. Um, and it's not a bad idea. Those uh, freezers are, uh, they're not that expensive. And you don't have to run them all the time. If you have an old freezer at, at, in your basement, you might think, well, that's like built like a tank. But remember, it burns electricity like a tank too and they're not very efficient at all. In fact, it could increase your energy bill by so much that you're better off taking that money, buying a new unit uh, that's gonna run efficiently, keep your food better preserved as well. So five days on fresh food. What about something like broccoli? Broccoli, you got more time. So if raw broccoli, as long as it's fresh and standing up, something like this, you know, celery, broccoli, lettuce even, you know, you're closer to two weeks on stuff like this. However, once you cook it, then you start the five day clock. So if I were to blanch and shock this, now I want to eat this in five days. It's a little bit, it's a little bit safer than like a protein, you know, so maybe six days, but you'll notice because it'll start to get like some sliminess on it. So this is for my dinner tonight. And then um, as far as thawing, so I got some food that I'm thawing. I got some food that I'm thawing for dinner and lunch, because like you, I'm I'm I Maybe like you, but I'm certainly going to the store and stocking up a little bit. So I'm thawing right now. I'm making pork loin with green chilies from the Pueblo Chili Festival that I have in the freezer, and also some salmon. So this is going to be, I'll make all this tonight. This will be a meal for tonight and tomorrow. Um, and it's still kind of frozen like a rock, but I'm freezing this, I'm thawing it in the refrigerator. Overnight's going to be the best for a thawing. Uh, if you're in a hurry, honestly, do the best way, the way the restaurants do it, is under running water. Um, if you constantly have a small amount of water just running, uh, that's a speed thaw method. Or you know what I do? I do the defrost in the microwave. That actually works really, really well. If you're careful and you don't overdo it, um, you'll be surprised at how beautiful it'll thaw, something like that. Yeah, it can start to cook it if you're not careful. So just keep an eye on that. Okay, my noodles. Let's take a look here. Are we doing? I think we're doing good. This is how I tell. Take a noodle. Mmm, yeah, perfect. I also look here, if you look really co closely, really, really closely, you can see this little white, just tendril of uncooked pasta. That's El Dente. And by slightly undercooking it, it gives it a chance to over uh, carry overcook, which is important. All right, let me grab a calendar. Calendar. Now I want to reserve a little bit of this pasta water for the sauce. That's some of you might know that trick about reserving pasta water for for a sauce. What happens is the pasta water's got some starch built into it from when you cook the noodles, and that's going to uh, help kind of thicken the sauce uh, and uh, have the sauce stick to the noodles really nicely. So I'm going to hang on to this for the time being. Okay. And here's my noodles. You can see steam is billowing out of them. I've got them in a big colander so that they can breathe and take a little bit of temperature off of them. If I was doing this uh, in batch, large, large batches of pasta, I might uh, add ice water, cool this down. You know, you can cook pasta. If your family eats pasta every day, go ahead and cook a couple boxes of it. Store it un, uh, uh, unsauced, no oil or anything in the refrigerator, like I was saying earlier. Make some sauce or heat up some sauce, toss it with the pasta. And why, why cook pasta fresh every day if that's not really in your wheelhouse? Uh, for something like this, though, pasta carbonara, 
This is what's known as almond youth. Last minute. You make it, you eat it. You eat it right away. This is not one of those dishes where you make, make it for 20 people, well, 10 people, less than 10 people, and have it sit around. This is really a restaurant dish. So this is perfect if you're cooking, oh, it's just me, it's just me and you know one person, you know, my partner, and we're making dinner for two people and I don't want a lot of leftovers. This is that almond youth restaurant style dish. Okay, um, my pan is preheated, so it's been on the stove. Stove's been on this whole time before I even got on television. Here on um, Facebook Live, I turned my pan on. You can see my pan, it's empty, it's clean, it's dry. This is a scan pan, so that's that black, um, uh, kind of shaggy, non-stick. Scan pans are fantastic. This thing's been through hell and back and it does a great job. Okay, now I'm gonna need some egg yolks. All right. And what I'm gonna do here with my egg yolks, and this is one of my little tricks here. I'm not going to save the egg whites. Oh, I'm not going to save the egg whites because I might use those. A lot of times I won't save the egg whites if I'm not baking a lot, but I'm going to be cooking with you guys every day, so why not keep them? Okay, so I crack with one hand. I'm going to go right into my fingers, and that's going to separate the yolk from the white. And this is like, this is a habit I got into working in restaurants where I crack an egg and I take the cracked egg shell and I put it right back in the, um, right back in the egg container. And then I just put that back in the fridge. And then when it's completely empty, I just throw it out. I think that's easier than dragging egg white, you know, stuff all the way across the kitchen. Um, in a restaurant where we buy big family style, um, you know, flats of eggs, 15 dozen at a time. You know, I worked in restaurants uh, that would feature brunch and we would go through 15 dozen eggs easily on in one day. So, um, we would just go right back into the into the egg carton and throw the whole thing at the end of the uh, end of the shift. It was actually a lot easier to clean, keep clean. Okay, my egg yolks, egg whites, which I'm gonna reserve. I don't know what I'm gonna make with that right now, but I'll think of something. All right, I got my pan preheating. Okay, my pan's good and hot. All right, I'm gonna add some oil. I'm gonna use a little bit of canola oil. I like to start my bacon in a little bit of oil as opposed to going dry in the pan. It could, it could stick. If you've ever been cooking bacon in a pan, and you know how that first piece of bacon almost like welds itself to the bottom pan? If you add a little bit of oil, it jump starts the cooking process. And the bacon fat in this particular dish is part of the sauce. So you want nice fatty bacon. Okay. I hear a good sizzle back there. I think Pete's gonna come around. We're gonna take a look. Pete's walking. Okay. Guys, if you're home and you're bored, now's the time to learn how to flip your food, okay? Maybe not searing hot, hot bacon fat at first, but here's what you do. You get all the food to the edge of the pan, away from you. And you're actually going to pull and have the food come back towards you. Okay? Push. Have your food go back towards the front of the pan and then pull. You can learn this uh, with nothing in the pan. It can just be dry. You can throw in, I don't know, some green beans or just something that's gonna roll around the pan and you can get this motion down. It's the same motion if you're flipping eggs. It's all the same, okay? And I know it looks like I'm pushing, but the push is really to facilitate having the food reach the end of the pan so you can do the flip back, okay? So how long do I wanna cook my bacon? I want to get it about 70% of the way cooked before I add the shallots, which are going to be the next ingredient, okay? So what's 70%? Well, it's up to you. Do you like your bacon really crispy? Let it go a little longer. If you like it a little bit more tender, maybe some of that fat in there, a little less. To me, we're there. Okay, I'm going to grab my shallots. I got my convenient little prep cups, all right? I like... I like these plastic bowls or ceramic with these plastic ones. If I drop them, whatever, they don't break. And they're just really the right amount for a recipe like this. Okay, I'm gonna cook my shallots. I'm a little high, so I'm gonna turn my temperature down. And if I'm too hot, pick your pan up, right? And that's a great way to kind of reduce temperature without losing all of the energy you have in your stove there, okay? Next, garlic, okay? How much garlic? I 
kind of added my garlic to my, my chopped garlic. I'm gonna have to pick in there a little bit. Good, beautiful, lovely. Okay, got my garlic. Careful, don't let your garlic burn. That would be the worst thing that could happen. I'm gonna grab a spoon here and a little bit of my pasta water. Careful, this doesn't splatter on you. But once it splatters, because of course we're adding basically water to fat. And you can see that's reducing off. Good. I'm gonna let that reduce slightly or cook down, intensify flavor. That is also gonna keep your garlic from burning. So if you're worried about your garlic burning, really at any time, get some moisture in there, water, wine, whatever you got, that's gonna do the trick. Okay, my pasta, okay, here's my pasta, it's beautifully cooked, it's still nice and warm. You can see how nice that stand up, right? So how much pasta do I need? Do I need all this? Maybe not, let me see here. That's the right amount. I'm not gonna use it all, it's okay. Just I mean, the pasta's pennies on the dollar, so instead of cramming it in there, just use the right amount, okay? We can add that to something else if we need to. Maybe I'll do something with my egg whites. All right, that's looking good. A little bit of salt and pepper. Okay, couple little things left here, all right? I'm gonna swing back around to the front. Pete and I are walking, all right? Got my parsley. Part of the reason we have parsley near the end, it actually helps bring the temperature down on the pan slightly and keeps things from overcooking. Then I'm gonna box grate some fresh Parmesan into here. I got this beautiful Parmesan that I found a big block of it. I mean, really gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I mean, it's, I've had it for a while, so it's kind of, it's kind of aged a little bit in my refrigerator and gotten like drier and more tense flavor. So, you certainly can use whatever cheese you got kicking around, but you know, classically it's this. And this is one of those classic Italian dishes, but you know, don't let your creativity hold you back. Okay, now my eggs, you have to be quick here. Eggs and then stir. What will happen is the residual temperature from the, from the pasta will cook the egg yolk, giving it a nice creamy appearance. It's a little dry, I'm gonna add a touch more water. I might, I might do this in a bowl too to keep the eggs from overcooking. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, grab a plate. Like this. That, traditional pasta carbonara. So this is one of those, it's not scrambled eggs. Pasta carbonara is not scrambled eggs and noodles. I thought it was before, before I started, before I went to culinary school and learned how to cook pasta. But there we go. And then a couple finishing touches here. Of course, more cheese. Always more cheese. Always. Lost my box creator there. Now, you can add, you can take the same technique and you can do some twists to it. So, for example, one of the ladies at work, she said, I made that, but I made that with ground pork and cilantro. And I added hot sauce because I like, she likes Mexican food. So she put a, Mexican twist on it, but the technique worked. And I said, well, that's not really classical, but then I got thinking about it and I thought, it's really clever. So this is dinner tonight. Quick pasta, pair this with a salad, you know, maybe some uh, red wine, white wine, white wine for this. I think it's gonna really, the acid is gonna cut through some of the richness of all the ingredients there. You'll notice there's no cream in this, right? I see a lot of pasta carbonara recipes, cream and eggs and peas and vegetables. This is really, to me, this is the classical way that I learned years and years ago. I'm sure there's variations on this, but this is gonna do the trick. So make sure you tune in tomorrow, because tomorrow I'm gonna to be making bread. I've got a quick jambalaya saute that I'm gonna show you guys. I'm gonna do some more knife skills. Later in the week, like I said, we're gonna be doing stir fry and brunch for dinner. So all kinds of fun things coming. If you have requests, I want you to tune in. Make sure you find us on YouTube as well at Appliance Factory and Mattress Kingdom and at Chef Mark Calix. You're going to like and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in. I hope everybody enjoys dinner. All right. Uh, are, we, are we all fair? Can I, can I eat? Can I, can, I just, can I just pick out? Oh, man. This is my favorite pasta. What, what, we're, still, we're still on here? Oh.